20 years ago, the US Air Force, Naval Aviation and Marine Corps Aviation were simply in another league technologically compared to their potential threats. The US started to procure stealth planes, advanced missiles, radars and other sensors. Back then, Russia or China had none of those really. And while Russia made fairly modest improvements to their capabilities in the years since then, China rushed ahead. So much so that when we look at the situation 20, 10, 5 years ago, as well as the numbers today, one can notice that the US Air Force's technological edge has steadily eroded. This video will explore just where and how that edge shrunk. Protection of military data links is important. The more the enemy knows about you, the greater the danger you're in. That can be translated into civilian life too, which is why Aura sponsoring this video might be a good fit for you. Aura app monitors your emails and passwords to see if they've been involved in data breaches or exposed on the dark web. It gives you recommendations on what to do. It also features a VPN where your internet traffic is encrypted and rerouted to keep it safe. It has a password manager, which is great as I always keep forgetting my passwords. The app protects your device from malware and has real-time credit card and identity theft monitoring. Plus, anyone can find data about anyone on the internet – your name, phone number, address and so on. Data brokers will sell your personal information. Aura identifies data brokers and automatically submits opt-out requests on your behalf, including junk mail and telemarketing lists. It helped clean my inbox nicely. If you sign up now using my link, aura.com slash binkov, Aura will give you a two-week free trial. You'll be amazed at how many data brokers are sharing your information. The link is also available in the video description below, or you can just scan the QR code on screen. Let's go on with our video. The US military still holds the technological edge over other countries' Air Force assets, but as said, we'll show how that edge has been eroding. Number of planes and quality of crews are important components of air power, but so is technology. It matters a lot whether a plane is a stealthy one or one from the 1980s, if it's armed with the latest missiles or one's 20 years old, if it has the latest sensors or, you get it already, old ones. So we will cover several key technology points for modern fighters, such as the generational level of their radars and other sensors, their short-range and long-range missiles, their stealth levels and overall generational level of the airframes. Yes, in a way, even those are simplified markers for overall technology levels of an Air Force, but within the confines of a YouTube video, those will have to do. 20 years ago, back at the start of 2003 or so, Chinese Air Forces were still largely stuck in the 1960s and 70s technology-wise. Out of little over 2,000 tactical combat jets, China had only 280 fighters which could employ beyond visual range missiles. And even out of those, just 76 could employ missiles with active radar guidance. Meaning rough analogs to the early US AMRAMs, which was in service since 1991, a decade earlier. Basically back then, even the Chinese planes that could use long-range missiles still relied on missiles that were on average a decade older than US ones, technology-wise. In 2003, the best US missile was AMRAM C6 variant. Among the fighter jets, when attack planes are disregarded, over a quarter were J6 fighters, local variants of the Soviet MiG-19, which first entered service in 1955. To call those planes obsolete would be an understatement, even for 2003. Their tiny radar was based on one of the earliest Soviet radars for MiG-19. Some 700 more jets were Chinese variants of the Soviet MiG-21. J-8s were basically enlarged MiG-21s, though most still did not use beyond visual range missiles. Over 300 Q-5 attack jets were also largely obsolete, being variants of the J-6. 76 Su-30s acquired from Russia were the only multi-role fighters China had back then, and among the few capable of using guided bombs. Some of the Q-5 could also use laser-guided bombs, but those were small planes of very limited reach and payload. Most of the Chinese fighters used infrared-guided missiles, the PL-5 and PL-8. The former was based on the Soviet K-13, and back then in 2003 used a single-band seeker. PL-8 was a bit larger and more capable, based on the Israeli Python 3, which relied on 1980s technology. 
US was using late subvariants of the Sidewinder M. With the brand new Sidewinder X sporting an image infrared seeker and vector thrust being on the cusp of operational capability. As for special mission planes for aerial radar surveillance, battlefield radar surveillance or electronic emission surveillance, China barely had any. They had four Soviet Source 2154M, which were originally 1980s Elin planes, but were also just recently modified so they use a battlefield surveillance radar somewhat in a similar role to the US Joint Stars planes. Those were joined by four Y-8J sort of aerial early warning planes. They were quite rudimentary in that role. Let's compare those to the US fleet of early 2003. It operated 103 airborne early warning planes, though 70% were the smaller E-2 Hawkeyes, which were optimized for sea surface search, though still better than their Chinese counterparts back then that some 25 more AWACS-like planes than China. While China had those four mixed-mission ELINT-capable planes, the US had 32 dedicated ones, or eight times more, on top of some 150 Prowler planes, which, while jammers, also carried quite sophisticated sensors capable of locating enemy radar emissions. In 2003, a small number of US fighter-capable planes may have not been cleared for active radar-guided missiles, but over 90% likely did use AMRAAM or Phoenix missiles. Certainly, all 3,800 planes were able to use beyond visual range missiles, such as AIM-7 Sparrow, and those planes had decent radars for that time. Some 26 planes even had AESA radar arrays, which was top-of-the-line revolutionary radar technology back then. China had nothing similar, with their most modern radars being those in just 50 of the newest J-8 fighters sporting large slotted planar arrays and coupled with decentish back-end hardware. The flankers' radar arrays were a generation behind, using twisted Cassegrain arrays, design ideas of the 1970s. But due to the sheer size and available power, they still outperformed the J-8's radars. Finally, the US had 60 stealth fighters back then, China had none. From 2003 to 2013, the US air services invested in new technology, of course. They built more and more Super Hornets with AESA radars. They built a fairly small number of F-22s, having cut their planned numbers. The F-35 was on the horizon too, but not yet put into service. Missiles used were iterative variants of the AMRAAM, though Sidewinder X became a staple since then. Chinese air forces started procuring domestically made flanker variants and J-10 fighters, all fourth generation planes, and an increasing number of AWACS-like platforms. The J-20 stealth fighter was still in the prototype testing stage at that point. Looking at the generations of the airframes, the US had started to invest in stealthy 5th gen airframes more, while China invested heavily into 4th generation ones, getting rid of a large number of their obsolete planes, moving the percentage of 4th gen planes from 14 to 50% in a span of just 10 years. Of course, 4th generation planes are a broad category, their radars and other sensors, as well as weapons carried, provide added granularity. One can see that while the AESA radars were still not proliferating in Chinese air forces, fairly advanced missiles did proliferate, as China had introduced the PL-12 around 2005 or so. The type saw various improvements over the years and is now plausibly comparable to AUTI's AMRAAM models. US Air Forces rushed ahead on AESA radars, with all Super Hornets and 5th generation jets getting those. When it came to larger planes for surveillance and early warning, the US did not do much from 2003 to 2013, still relying on the same platforms, with mostly just software updates, except for the Growler planes, which started replacing the older generation Prowlers. In large Elint aircraft, China managed to get closer to parity numbers-wise, with their 18 platforms, meaning the US lead there dropped to 70% more. Of course, the US still had almost 150 Growler and Prowler planes, which could do a part of the said mission. Battlefield surveillance planes saw some more usage in China, though due to Tupolev 154 being used both for DAT and ELINT, it's hard to actually give a precise figure. The US still had a 2 to 5 times advantage in numbers there. AWACS-like planes are another area where the US technological edge slipped. China procured more, while the US stayed at similar figures as 10 years ago. The overall difference dropped to some 6.5 times more such planes for the US. 
that figure does not include Chinese helicopter-based early warning platforms, which are even less useful than the carrier-based E-2 Hawkeyes. Interestingly, while E-2D variants have started getting delivered to the US Navy around that time, sporting AESA radar arrays, Chinese AWACS planes received AESA radar arrays half a decade earlier. While Chinese air forces certainly developed quickly, helped by their low starting base, it wasn't until 2018 or so that the US Air Force technological lead started getting eroded in pretty much all areas. China started adding AESA radars to their fighters as well. Its J-20 fighter had just entered service and a thoroughly redesigned J-10 variant was already in mass production by then. Of course, China was still burdened with a few hundred remaining J-7 and J-8 fighters. That still meant over a quarter of its fighter force was fighting just with short-range infrared-guided missiles. When it comes to AESA radars, China augmented its fighters and went up to three and a half times fewer such fighter radars compared to the US. China also introduced new generation missiles around 2015 and 2016. Both the short-range PL-10 and medium-range PL-15 seem to have proliferated to a large number of Chinese planes by then. Both represented large jumps in capability. While previous generation infrared guided missiles were also improved over time, getting dual band sensors, the PL-10 basically equaled US Sidewinder X. While the PL-15 seems like just an evolved PL-12, the US Air Force regards it as very dangerous. In 2015, US Air Force General Carlisle cited the PL-15 as the reason for starting development of a whole new missile to replace AMRAAM, and indeed the AIM-260 has started a crash course development since 2017. It is supposed to enter service by the end of this year, which represents development speed and urgency that's basically unheard of, even when including late Cold War metrics. One of the important quotes from General Carlisle was the need to outstick the Chinese missiles, suggesting the PL-15 actually outranges or at least matches the latest AMRAAMs. This past March, an official at an AVIC company missile institute said in an interview that PL-15's range exceeds 200 kilometers. Air Force Secretary Kendall also said US AWACS were vulnerable to PL-15 missiles. Indeed, when such large aerial sensor platforms are examined, one can see that the US actually fell behind China in actual technology it fields in its AWACS planes. Both in 2018 and even today, the US still relies on E3 Sentry planes, which still sport the same radar array. Yes, the back-end hardware and software has been refreshed several times, but even the US-owned generals have repeatedly said that E3 is not competitive anymore and that urgent replacement is needed. So far the likeliest future candidate is E7 Wedgetail, though that too is not really cutting-edge technology anymore and is only likely to get the US to parity level technologically. Most problematically for the US Air Force, China kept making more and more AWACS-like planes. By 2018, they also introduced a second-generation AESA array in their KJ-500 platform. US lead on total number of AWACS-like platforms shrunk to five times more than China. But like we said, E3 is behind KJ-500 in capability and technology, and 70% of the US AWACS-like fleet is relying on small E2 planes, which, while technologically speaking, are similar to KJ-500, are still less capable due to their small size, which limits the performance of their radar array. Yielding platforms-wise, China kept adding more, so that technology segment also kept strengthening, coming to roughly two-thirds of US large plane Elin platforms. Modernization of existing jet fighters was also a thing by 2018, and especially by today. Of course, small-scale modernization and software modernization is always ongoing, but to actually replace a radar array or to add sensors onto planes that were previously not existent is not as common. China started adding missile approach warning sensors on their older flankers around 2015 or so. Those help warn the plane of incoming missiles, relying on more than just radar emissions, providing planes with options for more timely defensive decisions. The US is behind on applying that particular technology to their older fleet with so far only some of the F-16s getting set capability via specialized weapon pylons, which have those sensors integrated. Navy Super Hornets did not yet get those, and it remains to be seen if modernized F-15s will receive those eventually. 
Of course, such sensors do exist on US fifth generation planes, such as F-22 and F-35, and are likely even more sensitive than those on fourth generation Chinese fighters. But China has been putting them on a lot of their planes. By today, the pace of US application of new technology compared to China has been a mixed bag. On one hand, F-35 production hit its stride and the US increased its advantage in stealthy fighters. On the other hand, application of AESA radars, other sensors and advanced missiles has been happening more in China. Granted, China's baseline numbers are smaller, but even in nominal terms China has been adding more planes in total and more AESA-equipped planes per year in the last year or two. We had a video on that topic some time ago, so check it out. Figures in that video are a bit behind the times, as it seems China's production of their J-20 stealth fighter has increased even more. If that pace continues, China may indeed be procuring nearly as many stealthy fighters annually as the US within just a few years. China has been retiring their obsolete J-7 fighters at a rapid pace and recently news came that by the end of 2023 the last J-7 unit may be removed from service. That would likely mean that by the start of 2025 all Chinese fighters would be 4th generation or newer, with at least 12% being 5th generation. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. As it stands now, the US has one quarter of its fighter-capable force consisting of fifth-generation stealthy jets. China is far below, at just 8%. When it comes to AWACS-like planes, China continues to procure high numbers of their most potent KJ-500 platforms, which are now more numerous than the entire US E-3 fleet. The US, of course, still has the smaller Navy's E-2s to plug in the gaps, but the overall ratio has dropped there as well, with China now having 60% of the US AWACS-like plane numbers. Elint planes-wise, China's fleet grew even more, to two-thirds of the US fleet of Elint planes. Once again, that does not include US growlers, which also have some Elint capabilities. However, China did start encroaching on that US monopoly as well. Their flanker-derived jammer jets, which seem to be direct analogs to growlers, have started production. While they may represent just 1 14th of the US fleet today, that ratio may grow rapidly in the coming years. Just years ago, no other country in the world had such dedicated tactical combat planes with Elintan jamming capabilities, capable of accompanying supersonic jets in formation, if needed. Then there's the mysterious very long-range missile. It's a capability that the US was not developing, relying on its AMRA missile. But since 2016, when a very large Chinese missile was shown, that seems to have changed. The US is keeping development of its new large missile largely secret, but it's almost certain it's still a few years away from being fielded. The Chinese missile is a mystery, as China chooses not to show off such weapons. It's possible it's already in service, given the 2016 tests. China is also not showing off its guided ground attack weapons so only an occasional image will leak through, showing that China is indeed adding both stealthy standoff bombs and missiles, similar to at least the US JSAW, if not JASSM as well. Small form bombs have also been observed. Satellite guidance of weapons has not really been an issue for China since 2012, when it finished its Asia-Pacific Beidou satellite constellation. Then there are targeting pods. While the US has used those since late 1980s, and while in Russia to this day targeting pod use has not proliferated, China seems to have embraced them in numbers. They've been observed used on both A and C subvariants of the J-10, the J-16 and the JH-7 planes. China has also been testing its second stealthy fighter design, the J-35, since 2021. As it is based on the already existing demonstrator design, the FC-31, its development may be fairly quick. The US will test fly its new stealth bomber this year, while China is likely on course to do the same in the next year or so. And even underlying technology-wise, China seems to be aggressively closing the gap. It uses unique drone designs, and there's a telling example of AESA radars. As said, the first fighter jet AESA radars were accepted into US service some 23 years ago. China placed its first such radars into service some 15 years later. The next big thing in radars is a switch in underlying materials used in AESA radars, from gallium arsenide to gallium nitride. 
So far the US has received 25 such radars by the end of 2022 for some of its fighter jets. It's unknown if China is using similar tech on its jets. But looking at the same technology being used in larger, easier to implement radars, like ground-based surveillance radars, China seems to have shrunk the US advantage to mere years. The US military seems to have started receiving search radars with said technology around 2018. While China's military will of course not report such details, it might be quite telling that at a similar time Chinese radar manufacturers started promoting search radars with said technology for export which may mean China's military is getting those as well. Now, it's important to stress that US Air Forces still retain some technology edge in most categories. J-20 isn't as stealthy as the F-35, for example. But as this video suggests, the overall edge has been eroding for some time, partially because the US needed a long time to actually implement a new technology and procure in-service systems and partially because China has been catching up in baseline technologies in the first place. Current and future trends may not be good for the US Air Forces, but given the still very large numbers disparity not favoring China, the US likely has another decade or so before it really needs to worry. Then again, battles are not shaped by technology alone, as geography and politics can influence local numbers so battles in certain locations may not be feasible for the US even today. That's it for this video. If you liked it, you know the drill. Subscribe and definitely hit the bell button too. You won't get notifications for future Binko videos without that. And if you really like our content, consider becoming either our patron or our YouTube channel member. Just click the join button for that. In both instances, you can get special perks, like access to our monthly publishing schedule, early access to our scripts in development, and even early access to videos. And all our patrons and members get links to videos without any ads, to make your day at least a little easier. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.